what do you think, Jonas, helps you to, to get that focus, to get that creative work? Uh, how, how do you manage that if you spoke practically a little bit about it? Yeah. So the thing is, I don't in a way. Again, for those people who just try to like think they can't find focus, my advice would be not to, you know, I don't know, start doing medicine or whatever to being more focused or 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 actually starting to think they need to be more focused but i would say build infrastructure around yourself to say hey if you want to do a different thing every half an hour do four things a day and switch every half an hour but then if you make it work you will do something for in all of those four things and you'll be happy people say oh like you know this project is is crap or like this thing is nonsense it's like you don't know. The market will tell until, you know, mm. maybe what happens a year from this is going to be the greatest thing ever. The goal is you don't want to, you, you don't want to leave your kid when he's four years old, kind of in a way, right? And uh, if you don't mind a, a spicy question, uh, where is your wife in the priority list? How is your morning? Very good. Not too early this time. Only 9 a.m. So all good. Okay, so 7 p.m. in Lithuania, 9 a.m. in Los Angeles, right? Yeah, yeah. So how how is it for you and for your wife, right? You recently moved into LA, yeah. right? It's it's great. Uh, it's always sunny, depending where you live in LA. Uh, microclimate changes, but of course, it's much much warmer, way more sun. Time zones are much more difficult, especially with Europe. Uh, mm. But uh, but yeah, I can't complain too much, of course. So what what made you uh, move to LA? What was the reasoning? Um, so there's, I guess, longer and shorter answer. <laughs> and uh, the reason is we always wanted to make the business uh, move in Silicon Valley or, or America and build from there. So the aim was first Silicon Valley and we've spent a couple of years there. Uh, but then... I didn't want to go back to Silicon Valley after COVID. I uh, wanted to go back to LA instead because just like the atmosphere better, like the community better. And uh, we already kind of got bored uh, from, from Silicon Valley. So I just want to get back to LA instead uh, when we go back to the USA after COVID. And it worked out. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's a short answer or the longer one? <laughs> that's a medium version. <laughs> medium rare, right? Okay, okay. Okay, so, so Jonas, I mean, I think it would be important to, for listeners to know you better. I'm sure that you are a known person in the blockchain world, many interviews, much uh, a lot of visibility, uh, but uh, probably my listeners might not know you. It sometimes happens that, uh, for example, in Lithuania, we don't know what Lithuanians do outside Lithuania. So if you just need to describe who Jonas is, how would you answer this question? Sure, it's an interesting form of a question. I'm an entrepreneur and an engineer uh, in life in general. So, you know, I started as a software engineer, but I just consider myself an engineer uh, in many places, business, music, other other things, hobbies. Uh, and yeah, currently an entrepreneur. Uh, that's probably the best description. That was the word that you picked the first, right? Yeah, I think so, because, you know, it's 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 best describes the lifestyle you started or are required to live, with, you know, the, the stress, the pluses and the, the benefits of it as well, and your daily life and, and, and routine. So, you know, it just becomes no longer a job specific, but it becomes very, very generic. And that, that term entrepreneur is broad enough to kind of just describe the breadth of things you need to do. So if I moved into your skin, uh, what, how, how the day looks like, how the world looks like, if, if you gave me an average, an average uh, uh, day in your life, how would it look like? So an average day today uh, is different from probably an average day a year ago or two years ago or three years ago. So very much uh, depending, again, because of the industry we're in and, and the specifics this, this time very varies. So it's part of being an entrepreneur, at least in, in our industry in blockchain spaces is, is time changes and every month can be very different. 
but a, a regular day is 7 a.m. in the morning. Uh, I wake up 10 before 7 and I have calls 7 a.m. to 11. Immediately. Immediately. So okay. otherwise I would have to wake up, you know, 6 or whatever, get ready. So I just made my, my own routines to to be more efficient. So, you know, 10 to 7, I wake up 7 a.m. I start having my first calls. Uh, then I have four to five calls with European teams up until 11, 12. And then, you know, at basically lunch, 11 or 12, uh, I'm done with the calls. Then I have my breakfast, my shower, uh -huh. my, my, my sports, uh, you know, basically start the day after the day is already over and then have the whole middle of the day for working on my own and working in the US time zone. So calling partners, mm. uh, calling clients, et cetera, and basically doing the work you need to do on your own, uh, as well as just life things, you know. Uh, and in the evening, what gets hard is, again, European time zone kicks in and everyone starts being online. So I start mm. working again from like 8 p.m. to very often midnight or 1 a.m. or 11 p.m. Uh, then there's tough periods. You do it every day almost. So you have two shifts. Uh, then things get easier. You block out, you know, three days or two days a week. So you have three evenings. And then next morning is you start eight maybe instead of seven. So you choose, let's say, you do two or three days when you do night shifts as well and you don't have an evening. Uh, you do like late evening calls with Europe. And then a couple of days where you reserve for dinners, cinema, and whatever, when you know there isn't going to be any calls in the evening. So how often do you go to cinema or, or something like that, let's say, in a month or in a week or in a year? How often uh, does it happen? It, it does happen. So that's kind of that's kind of the ways we, we work hard, play hard. Uh, so every time there is a free evening or a free weekend, especially we try to we try to go out meet somebody uh so just be social uh leave home so cinema not so much i just seen uh, oppenheimer that was cool but uh not our main hobby but normally if there's free evenings you try to uh meet people outside so meeting people what else do you do in your free time as an entrepreneur <laughs> so <laughs> well, what else do I do? Uh, then, then time becomes, then times get tough. You kind of try to get more efficient. So one of the ways I dealt with myself and, and stress and everything was to find specific hobbies and build infrastructure around them. So anytime you need to procrastinate or, or, or just do change something or do something every time your hobbies are right there ready for you so uh so i started doing uh started getting back a little bit to music uh as well as simulator racing so i you know built some what racing sorry simulator racing so sim racing oh yeah I, I, cars, i'm aware basically. of that okay yeah but just mm -hmm. as a hobby just to build the skill set and i took an approach of if you don't start anything, nothing's going to build up and compound. If you do start something, uh, time flies. And two years later, you'll just turn around and realize that you gained a new skill or you learned something while doing your hobbies or procrastinating or whatever, or your daily one hour routines or breaks between work uh, or, you know, just to get some mental clarity back. So. I made I made those moments where you don't need to work to kind of be beneficial and learn like teach a skill for me. Uh, so the other hobbies is basically anytime there's free time, I either very quickly sit down do some music, or very quickly sit down do some laps on a sim simulator, or go out do some sports, or very quickly turn into something because that avoids the the time of not doing anything. And I guess everyone's different. Like I, I start to get frustrating if I'm doing nothing, right? If I, if I stop learning or doing things, I, I, you know, I just get, it gets uncomfortable. So I, you know, I tend to keep myself busy. Yeah. Yeah. It seems that you are 
like that border collie who needs to be kept busy and uh, otherwise the the dog will get very unhappy and my brain does scratch so not walls. so much yeah not so much physically like you know i don't oh, get I yeah i don't get jitters like i don't need to move all the time i can be i can be a thinker but for, but like for the brain very often needs mm -hmm. some sort of stimulation yeah, that's actually a, a pattern, I think, in the engineering population. I noticed that, especially in software engineers who are writing code, if they get bored, they suffer. So they need to, to keep their brains occupied to keep that cognitive load as high as possible, so to speak. Is it your experience as well? I guess so. I guess everyone's unique uh, in their own ways, but mm -hmm. I guess so. I could relate to that. Uh, you, you know, in, in the things you do, you tend to look for or seek like intellectual stimulation. Uh, and that's common with, you know, engineers and, and, and sort of any other geeky types. Uh, I guess yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned that you like creating music. Actually, recently I also uh, started getting into this field a little bit because uh, my partner is a, uh, her background is in musicology and she's a trained pianist. So we right. decided to get a, a piano in our house and I started learning it a little bit. Although she wanted me to learn from notes, I decided to go the cheat way by using tutorials on YouTube. And I actually yeah. like it much more because it gives much more immediacy, better, like faster results. So, so I definitely enjoy that. And I noticed that when I'm in the process, I forget everything like world stop. So is it yeah. like something for you when, when you are creating music? Absolutely. So, and and I I dig you too. Too. I went both ways. So I finished music school when I was a teenager. Oh. I went to both schools, normal school and the music school. So, like in the morning, it was normal lessons, and then in the afternoon, you go to music school. You have four, five, or six more music lessons. Uh, and I played like you know several instruments throughout teenagehood. Uh, but then I stopped. And, Which were uh, those? Sorry. Which instruments did you play? Uh, so my main instrument was synthesizer. So I played synthesizer for uh, for seven or eight years, and I also played a guitar. And I had to have mm -hmm. several other instruments in the music school. So I played accordion, which I didn't like. Oh, wow. uh, and uh, you know, it was other lessons like music theory and and, and so on. Mm, I see, amazing. So, what type of music you tend you uh, do you create in your in your free time? So now, as you said, now uh, now it's 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 YouTube and uh, it's much faster cycles, and you can straight away experiment and do. Now now I got into electronic music, so I've been into it for quite some time. But what interests me most is 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 synthesizers, is sound creation, basically turning electricity into sound and and how to shape it and that you know the best the best i guess framework for that currently is electronic techno or melodic techno um hmm. that that's that style of music hey, have you ever tried like playing a raves or djing a little bit or is just a side you don't go we, into the public with your creation no no <laughs> so i'm definitely not ready to 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 go to oh. public uh you know, we, we used to play at a high school party, like school parties, you know, I, I, I can use, I can use a deck, but definitely not to, 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 to entertain people and be confident mm -hmm. enough not to screw up. Uh, so, mm -hmm. so just, just to keep my own brain busy, uh, just to express myself, if it turns into something enjoyable for people around, I very much like sharing that experience, but definitely not, not jumping ahead of myself i see maybe one day after maybe one day become become filthy rich right <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's never the driver but if it comes to that why not you know you do what you like but i do I like see. technologies too i do like inventing technologies so like as i said this is something this is something which my brain loves and needs doing uh and 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 you know you it's 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 better to have a a useful skill to to spend some time other than and then work to basically just just mm. you know if that's if that's the way the brain relaxes um just, you need to just give it to it <laughs> amazing uh, you also mentioned that you sometimes uh, do sports uh, anything in particular that you like that helps to keep your mind peaceful i'm not really great 
that much at sports. I play tennis, so if there's people around, you know, once or mm. once a week or or, mm. or 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 twice a week, I try to go and play some tennis with someone. Uh, regular, mm. like gym, you know. Again, not mm -hmm. like every day, but when you find time and when you force yourself to go. So just yes, trying to again. I, I should do much more. So I'm definitely not 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 like not very much into sports which i think you know should do way more because it does help a lot to keep yourself sane uh it's just there's always limited capacity i guess also mentally to focus on things so if you need to focus on diet and sports and hobbies and life and entrepreneurship and uh, and and business and technologies and everything it it becomes overwhelming and people just choose priorities so mm. So I guess sports is now like, you know, number three, four, not number one or two. I see. Uh, it's somewhere there. <laughs> and uh, if you don't mind a, a spicy question, uh, where is your wife in the priority list? Oh, she's, you know, family is always number one. So that is it's zero. It's layer okay. zero. <laughs> in, zero. <laughs> in blockchain terms, it's layer zero. Uh, family is family is zero. Everything comes comes next. Uh, mm. Yeah, I genuinely believe that. So how do you make it like, uh, how, how does it look like in reality? If let's say you wake up, you do calls, you work in the middle of the day, you work uh, at the end of the day. So... How do you combine your busy work life with your like personal personal family life? Yeah, so it's hard, but again, everyone makes things work their own ways. Uh, so we both have things to do. So you know, as mm -hmm. an entrepreneur, like people get need to get used to 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 the lifestyle. So when there's days when we're just busy. Uh, we're busy. So, uh, you know, people find things to occupy themselves. So, you know, uh, my, my partner, uh, she's very career focused too, and she's doing great and, uh, and, and always doing other things. So it works out for us to keep ourselves busy. But then we do spend time together. Uh, we're very focused. So we definitely spend weekends or, or if there's evenings together, you assign time and you give full focus and attention. Uh, so that's one way to to do it that you know if there's no time you try to catch up and keep things focused and efficient i guess that's kind of a general theme in entrepreneurship is you have so limited time you need to really dedicate and then focus on each time to be as 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 efficient as useful there in that moment so if family is important and you don't have physical time to spend then that means you need to be way more focused and way more attentive than then you do spend that time so it does get hard but then it, you know you, you you find the moments to to make up for it and while we were building mm. up a startup uh then if there was times where my partners you know the co-founders we would just go to offsites uh, and not have holidays but basically spend time together uh, doing holidays which became vacations so you stop having normal holidays they become vacations you just spend time and live together uh you know mornings and evenings talking about the business while still not feeling like working and enjoying life while our partners uh you know then spend spend time together so again it's just about a bad mm. efficiency where you stop being able to afford time-wise like normal holidays where you can really tune out and like leave your co-founders and friends and 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 take two weeks off then it's just not an option um you again you, you manage by doing half work half half lifestyle and turn work into lifestyle is that good or bad i guess it's you know is it good to have work as lifestyle it depends but i think that's the only way to really at least kick off a, a startup or kick off a business is to you need to put in the hours and attention and i mean like total attention like you know at that moment the business becomes layer zero and the family becomes the support for you uh hmm. so it is you know I, I don't think it is possible to really kick something off nine to five and with half-time attention but uh 
there is ways to give attention and then still try to balance a little bit of life around you, but surely with, you know, with sacrifices. Yes. Uh, what you're describing reminds me of a concept from organizational psychology called a work-life blend. And right. this concept was created as a alternative to work-life balance. So there was a time when you were able right. to have nine to five, you know, job and then rest afterwards. But there are situations, there are uh, industries, there are roles where it's difficult, as you say, to do that. So you're trying to arrive at a blend where you are just, you know, you are just like slashing time in a different way, but still getting some, some, some enjoy, enjoy, enjoyable experiences. Like, for example, va vacationing with your, with your uh, business partner, so to speak. Yeah. And I guess it started at university where it, we just got into this mindset of, of, of going further and almost like competing in a good way with the friends, but not competing, but it was just this environment of, oh, there's just so many opportunities suddenly, uh, you know, coming to, to this university and then there's internships, companies, there's this and that, and, and people got, or at least my circle and people got really, really into that. Like people got hooked on possibilities and opportunities. And, uh, and I personally kind of just never got rid of that of that mindset and and other people around uh you know we kept kept being driven by opportunities and uh and then for most of the people i know they they turned the some sort of the hustle they do into 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 a lifestyle uh there's 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 other areas i guess i don't know new york is is a different type than, than Los Angeles, for example, in terms of the way people work because there's, or London as well, because there's skyscraper uh, lifestyle where it's more like you work hard, you know, six to, to whatever in, 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 in a company environment, in a skyscraper environment, and then people shut off completely from work. And then we do sports, we do hobbies, they, 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 they really make those two things different and they, you know, perform hard in both spaces. Whereas, whereas, whereas if you do more freelance careers, more entrepreneurial careers, I, I don't think you can get away from blending the life with, because in mentally, it really needs all of your attention, at least for, for a good amount of time. Yeah, I guess it also depends probably on the response, the nature of responsibility and the uh, work life, because I'm also a freelancer. Uh, but the fact that I'm a freelancing uh, counseling psychologist, I have to have that structure. So yeah. I have very specific hours when I do counseling. So for example, from Monday to Thursday, six to seven hours per day, I have usually two hours uh, during the day at lunch. Uh, so I, I tend to prioritize it as well. And I usually don't work after hours. And this is because I wouldn't be able to focus on my clients, on their issues, on their challenges, if I wouldn't care about my own well-being. So this is why I have to have the structure. And Absolutely. Friday usually is for more deep work, focused work, or some, some writing, maybe podcasting. Today is Friday as well. So I see that for me, it helps. But I totally can imagine that in your situation, especially due to time zone differences, it would be, it would be tough. Now, do you see examples in your community, in your colleague circles, where people are able to to split uh, their their uh, how to say work and and personal lives? Yeah, absolutely. And I think the key is the, the focus. So everyone just chooses mm. the strategies depending on their schedules or like just kind of the type of work we do. But I think the key is focus. So you know, when you spend the time, you, you really, you really dig into whatever you're doing. Uh, and then it's, yeah, I, it's, it's one of the two, as I said, is probably for, for people who have very structured hours and they can shut off mentally, then they, they do that for, for careers where you can't shut off mentally or you need creative work or it happens 24 seven, or, you know, you, you kind of almost just need to live and then always think about it and ideas come at different times and then you sit down at your own time 
or you have your own routines to be creative or maybe there's 50 50 you have some management responsibilities but then at the other time you 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 really just you know sometimes waiting for ideas to come back to your mind and you can't just sit down and wait so uh so you just balance life around it uh, and the most successful people i've seen are just very good at focusing uh focusing when they're doing something they're focusing efficiently on on what they're doing uh so so then you you can do a lot in those two hours and then uh and then and switch to something else as opposed to as opposed to maybe context context switch too much and or 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 don't get into enough depth mentally into a topic to to move forward you know if you're constantly switching so much you never think deeply enough about something it also becomes non 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 progressive yeah I noticed recently that uh, I get uh, many more clients who are thinking that they have ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, and they actually believe this because they find themselves oftentimes in situations when they switch context, but not consciously, it's just they are distracted by notifications on their phones, on some content, on people slacking them uh, or, or, or teaming them or whatever tool they are using, you know, and it's becoming like very scattered attention, you know, and then they think, oh, maybe I have ADHD. But I think this is related to maybe issues with dopaminergic system where just uh, not necessarily consciously, but you train yourself by getting very instant uh, dopamine gratification and you don't train yourself to get, you know, postponed gratification. And then you get like ADHD-ish symptoms. So... Uh, what, what do you think, Jonas, uh, helps you to, to get that focus, to get that creative work? Uh, how, how do you manage that if you spoke practically a little bit about it? Yeah. So the thing is, I don't in a way. And uh, it, it, that's the thing. You can either like fight it or, or go along with it a little bit. So first point, I totally agree with the connection to kind of dopam dopamine system because everything is connected to a dopamine system and the ADHD I think if it's like clinically diagnosed then it's a different uh different area I have known people I had partners in in, in previous startups who, who had like actual clinically diagnosed ADHD and it's you know it's it's like one one cases and then there's people who are hyperactive a little bit and I even myself tend to sometimes self-diagnose you know, in, in like friend environments of ADHD, but I've never been like, you know, anything, I've never visited a doctor, but people just find themselves being out of focus because of this fast lifestyle. And especially if you're, again, if you, if you are entrepreneur or doing projects, a lot of things, or, or generally more of this person who's context switching more often and, and kind of focused that much or have this, you know, a higher dopamine need in their nervous system then you can either fight it or create infrastructure to utilize it because those brains in my experience are then tamed and uh, connected properly to to where they can bring a lot of benefit they, they bring magic you know because because they're just very fast hyperactive they can go very deep they can do calculations very good so if you if you if you put those brains into 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 certain types of work they are very effective so if you make it a benefit then it doesn't like hurt your life it makes it useful uh if you're trying to do or be something where consistency is key and you're just not that type of person biologically already by that time it's it's either you can try to change yourself and that maybe is also another advice but but another strategy is kind of deal kind of go along with it and make 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 the most out of it as long as it's not problematic it's not damaging your health like it's not a health issue so again for those people who just try to like think they can't find focus my advice would be not to you know i don't know start doing medicine or whatever to being more focused or or, or actually starting to think they need to be more focused, but I would say build infrastructure around yourself to say, hey, if you want to do a different thing every half an hour, do four things a day and switch every half an hour. 
but then if you make it work, you will do something for in all of those four things and you'll be happy and 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 see if it works or not. But I wouldn't necessarily always uh, tackle the problem directly because it just leads sometimes to unhappy life if it is impossible. Mm-hmm. If you if you're really just biologically not that type of person, uh, sometimes you might need to change a career or something. So if you're really hyperactive, maybe being you know a pilot, a commercial airline a pioneer is pilot is not just the best fit because you need to stay very focused, right? You can't leave the plane in the middle of a flight. So. Uh, my advice would be that. My advice would be go with what makes your brain uh, deliver most. Hmm. What you're describing definitely resonates with me because in psychotherapy, the first thing that you do usually with clients, you're helping them stop fighting anxiety, stop fighting stress, right. stop fighting depression. You are trying to teach people that these kind of emotions are there for a reason. And your job is to learn how to use these powers for your benefit, essentially. These are very evolutionary driven processes that help our species to become what we are right now, you know. So it doesn't make sense to fight them too much. Of course, there are very difficult clinical situations when you need medication to get on your feet. But at the end of the day, anxiety will get back and you will need to live with that, you know. So I like what you're saying. And for people, especially who have clinical ADHD, it's... I think it's very important what you're describing to hear because people do try to, how to say, tame themselves, try to change themselves when actually their, you know, biological makeup maybe is different. So, yeah, I think that's a, a very compassionate strategy to, to navigate. Yeah, and don't get me wrong. I mean, people need to be open about themselves and self-like critical. So, again, if you see something is not useful for your life, or or constantly you know getting back into the same patterns it's you know it's a good idea to work on those things or again build different infrastructure to to mitigate that but so you know it's not to say that you should just ignore and double down if 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 your life's going down the spiral but if it's not then as you said why beat yourself up to it you know yeah, why beat yourself and watch too much content and see those hyper productive people that, you know, they, they are different animals, you know, so to speak. They they are not you and probably you will not be them. So yeah. I understand what you're saying. I think there's always important to find that balance where when you think, okay, am I functioning well? And if let's say your work is fine, your job is fine, you're achieving your results, you're getting good feedback, your partner is okay with you. So yeah. you're children are okay with you so it says that okay you it's it's everything is good with you're good enough you know but there are situations when people just can't do their jobs and they are getting fired or getting bad feed that so that's definitely a signal then you have to think carefully what what you're doing and what you're not doing you know yeah and there's different situations when you get into sort of burnout scenarios then you know then you probably need additional effort and strategies to, 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 to build yourself back up. But in the regular situations, yeah, I, I don't, I think most of the people now are getting way more stress because of inflation. Basically it's harder to keep up in life. And, mm. uh, and, uh, and yeah, it's very easy to start beating yourself and, 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 and becoming way more distracted and less focused. And then started thinking about the DNG and stuff because because the the speed of the environment is just so quick like industries change so quickly you can't keep up things appear markets change so quickly and 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 it's hard to keep up so you know and mm-hmm. and and the stress builds up builds up builds up and then you know at some point you start being less productive because of it and then you start having like one or two productive days a week uh, and it becomes not useful anymore. So you need to step down, take a break, uh, and then build yourself up to see how how productive can you really be. Because it's it's easy sometimes, also, you know, to overlook that you're being productive one or two days. But then, but then, if you pull yourself together for a complete, you know, for for a high productivity two days, and then you can't do anything else for the rest five, is it's it. it it becomes non-productive, you know, whereas sometimes maybe it's better to take a couple easy weeks and, you know, be productive two hours a day. 
and but for two weeks straight and then build that up you know instead of instead of keeping that cycle of being productive one day you pull yourself together and then you're done for another week and that burnout never ends so 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 sometimes you just need to take a holiday <laughs> take a break that's why mandatory holidays are in companies which can afford to do that because because it is important like the productivity compounds like i don't think it's you know you, you, you can Pro, there's people who can push hard and like we pushed hard for two three years uh personally with like with, without stops and we we could do that but then it got to the limits so almost saying okay <laughs> you need some holiday you know a week or two is nice or like complete shut off but uh, that's extreme cases and like you, you 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 really reach the end of like the limit what you think you can do but it's never there you can always do more uh, but it's not to yes. say you should should push that. Like I really strongly recommend for people to do take breaks because it's so easy to get into the habit of I'll just work more, I'll just you know I'll just do more. This is better. What that's what I need to do. But sometimes uh, this zoom out really helps and gives a better perspective and actually helps to move forward, solves the problems, gives the brain time to calculate on its own in different areas and different, you know, activities that you do, it, it, it just becomes better because it's so easy as, a, as an entrepreneur, as I said, to get into this cycle of, you know, thinking that you just need to keep, keep, keep pushing, but like you also need to keep oversight. Is this useful? Is this, is this productive? Right. And, and, you know, it, it very often happens naturally when you, when you break down, but why wait for that? You know, sometimes it's good to zoom out every once in a while just before that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you were hinting uh, at a important topic, I think, in the beginning. You mentioned that when times get tough and you need to procrastinate. And you also referred to a period in, in your career where you and your team were pushing for two, three years and you realize that, okay, we need to stop. We need to take a break. I, I feel that there's a story around this. So if, if speaking from your personal experiences or a specific experience, can you maybe share a story that uh, maybe drove you to some, some type of burnout and, and how did you navigate it? And what, what did you learn from it? I think uh, these personal experiences are most inspiring to, to the listeners so i think it very much related to uh for us it's 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 a regular startup story but it's it, it it was made i guess more more tricky because it was early it was a different industry it's 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 and sorry rough. honest when you say for us you mean syntropy or syntropy team, yes right? yes so we started okay. as noia network uh, uh now the company is called syntropy and uh, we started by doing blockchain technologies, um, and we basically the going back to the question, the di well, what makes it different from a regular startup story is been a new industry. When we started, it was the uh, it was end of uh, the one of the ICO cycles, and uh, blockchain was new, and uh, it token it tokenization was new, and uh, and this industry was industry was building up. So in other startups, you know, the immediate effects in the market are not felt so much as compared to the crypto and blockchain industry. So in, in regular startups, if there is a economic downturn, then it affects the capital raising and public perception, but it happens rare, like more rarely. Uh, and also it's not as directly connected to the people, to the public. In crypto and blockchain industry, you are already very public from day one. So every decision is under scrutiny and you have responsibility already publicly uh, to, the, to the investors or, or the community. And, uh, but the whole industry is changing and growing. And the biggest factor in blockchain industry is the crypto market cycles. So because it is a young industry, it's very cyclical. And, uh, and it goes through both innovation adoption cycles and both like financial boom and bust uh, cycles. And, and, and it's also ex exacerbated by the Bitcoin halving cycle, which adds its own spice and timeframes to it, etc. 
And what happens then is every day you're immediately exposed to what the company is doing. That's performance is immediately exposed. So we have this responsibility and like it's very hard to change as a startup because you're changing publicly. And, and, and uh, the market affects a lot. So basically what happened uh, two years ago, nearly by now, is when the market, when the crypto, this crypto cycle market basically uh, got bust uh, and started going down. And that's a typical bear market scenario. Uh, what happens is valuations drop. It's harder to raise capital. And then industries start seeing which use cases actually are developing further, which use cases are dropping more in popularity. And people start thinking what will be more needed immediately in the next cycle or the next innovation cycle. So the market and the industry is very much affected by, by, by that. And because of that nature, it's also very hard to change and adapt because you, you have this additional effort of keeping accountability to the, to the public. And that constitutes to uh, just a lot of stress when, when, when things happen. So uh, there was just a period when the market went south uh, and, uh, and we had to change a product direction uh, because we saw a better opportunity immediately to, to enter in to enter new to, to, to target a different market basically to really be web free blockchain focused and native and target that area of of blockchain data which we see there is a demand now whereas when we started the company uh we had a much wider vision uh and uh it's 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 still a great vision and we build a great technology just the market situation forced us to make some changes to target a different market first to gain adoption first and traction. So it's just those factors which makes it really hard to, to, build, to build a startup and uh, keep living in this industry which is changing itself. So it, you know what happens then personally, I, I think is, is just the same as any other startup, but uh, it just got to scale very quickly. And the speeds are different and crypto industry is much faster. So I would say if you compare a, a story uh, of a non-crypto startup, which gets to a billion dollar valuation uh, and, you know, goes through a cycle of expansion, contraction, changing some products that happens over a longer period of time. Uh, in, in a regular world, in crypto, it really happens sometimes very quickly, infused by this popularity inflow of cycle. And then it doesn't necessarily mean you develop technologies faster. It doesn't necessarily mean the adoption of your product will come faster. But you get that attention concentrated at one period of time. And everyone needs performance in those four months. And then, and, and then that attention goes away. So personally, it's just it just becomes way more dynamic than a regular startup, way more difficult to navigate because of the ever-changing actual markets you're operating in and because you're innovating, you're creating a technology. Uh, and that's why a lot of those companies who started similar timeframes when we did found how they need to change their product propositions over those five years to... To, to now really understand where the demand is, what's coming in this industry. Everyone understands this industry now, whereas three, four years ago, it was way more of a black box, way more of an experimental black box for everyone. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the reason why and why this experience was, I guess, different is that the story is just what there's, there was way more dynamics, way more, uh, way more, way more unknowns and waiting for waiting for what's going to happen in the actual industry in the market, which you know, yeah, yeah. Th thank you for giving this context, uh, and it definitely helps helps me at least to understand in what type of you know arena you are operating. But I'm still struggling to understand what it's like to for you personally. So, mm -hmm. you know, if if you had to describe how does it feel to 
to find yourself in these very fast cycles, what it's like to to be in your skin when your uh, company is valued at a sum X and then it goes down very rapidly, what it's like to feel those constant changes. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, you are a human, you know, so it can definitely, you know, bring down a, a, a person, even the, the strongest one. So from a psychological perspective, what was, was it like to, to be in, in your shoes in those years? So... I think it's just you, you collect the moments and, and uh, what was really cool about those couple of years is you collected a lot of them. So you collect, you know, 20 years for someone of worth of moments in, in a year. And, you know, what, it, that just makes you stronger. So there was periods throughout entrepreneurship where you kind of really, really, really think you kind of crossed a barrier of as you said you know everyone's a human but you start feeling less so you know so the amount of stress you what, can what handle, do you mean by that the amount of stress you can handle increases after you had more stress basically so as 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 we used to like talk and give an example where for people who never traveled let's say the first packing up a luggage is a stressful endeavor or if you're in a new country with a car rented out for the first time and you get a flat tire it's it's an exhausting experience and, and i've been there but after you know later on after you travel around the world let's say for someone they would be like look this is nothing right so it's same same with the business first problems are very stressful first situations are very stressful and but when you get into such swimming pool of things like we were thrown into in some situations because of this industry and the fast changing environment and because of this being public then you get you, you get you not naturally get numb you either get affected or if you mm -hmm. if you don't get affected that means you, you just learn to deal with it so you learn to cope with way more stress and i tend to think mm -hmm. i tend to think and that's tell me your like professional uh, opinion, but uh, that's just my thesis that people always feel maximum stress they can. It's almost like if you get a stressor, you almost feel always feel maximum stress you can feel almost like not max, but like a high amount. And then the more stress you can handle, you can just achieve more things. But it's not like you know, it's not like you will get a little stress. If you get a stressful situation, you just feel stress. And, uh, and, and, but, but the regular situations then become non-stressful at all. Like you just start looking at life, like, look, it's a flat tire. Like you, you change it, give a call, you wait, you know, you change your plans, you cancel your flight, life. Whatever. Happens. Yeah, whatever. So it changes to that. And it becomes about almost all situations in life. You become numb in a good way. And that builds you up. I think that's really, really important. And you had situations where you had to deal through people as well, you know, and and you learn to just be be strong and not take it or like, you know, front run people or just like smile and nod, but but have your own have your own stance and not be overpowered by people. So you learn to not be overpowered because as an entrepreneur, a lot of people will try to overpower you uh in, in in generally in just like not physically what do you not, mean by that how mean does it like, look like not physically or overtaking something but in conversations in every in every interaction is, is 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 a deal every interaction is an interaction so to feel confident comfortable if you have an opinion if you have a stance uh you know to stand your ground against when you think you're right, at the same time, listen when, when, when people have things to say and not get intimidated because you'll face very, various sorts of people. And it's very easy to get intimidated and uh, you get into that. So you learn not to get intimidated and this pressure of being a public company of uh, when things go right, everything is good. But when things go south, you know how Internet is. And people deal a lot now with social media when people, you know, do something silly or like something happens and then they get negative attention, right? They get bullied, etc. It breaks people down and it's, and, and it's so easy. 
and and we had to go through a lot of that when things are not going down in the market because when people put financial incentives into that when people invest their money that becomes a different emotional game as well and there are so many cases where you just can't do anything it's like nothing nothing like is affected nothing you can affect but you need to take the blame or you need to just deal with the consequences or just you know smile at the criticism or, or whatever and just just keep going stand your ground like really not taking it in if you if you start awesome. taking it in it's it's I, I think it starts breaking you down so at some point you need to stop taking it in mm -hmm. because it can be very dangerous to let to let it in if you start you know being affected emotionally so if you can be a little bit more specific so maybe even give me some some examples or what type of blame or criticism uh, you you had to face in your career that you managed you know to uh, <laughs> to to accept with a smile or not a smile what was the the criticism like for example so I, I wouldn't call it criticism it's just uh business is a very dynamic environment and again especially in, in our environment even more so so the very nature of our business is a public roadmaps and community and community holds you accountable. So, and naturally, if you need to change things as a business uh, and you as a leader, just take responsibility. Sometimes, you know, the decisions were affected by environment, sometimes by business, sometimes by, by your mistake, sometimes by someone else's mistake. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, but you, you, you carry a flag and because of our nature, you get, immediately judged just by financial performance like pe people say you know they like the new release of software or something uh and and there's a small community of users who actually care most about the, the product or, or the protocol etc but but a lot of people care about financial incentives and then they just judge you by that directly so it doesn't matter sometimes you know if you if if you do a good release and and then people are not happy financially they'll be unhappy if you do a bad release nothing works but but that is a good day financially or a good week people are happy so the correlate the, the the emotional response to your effort does not always correlate uh the outcome you're producing and some you just need to like learn that that sometimes it's just not correlated and um uh, and you, you get you know it's i'm talking about very specific sort of in internet things you know twitter insta not instagram twitter telegram sorry uh there are things where business community or our business community is is directed people value and judge your business and that is fair and square but but, but, but how does to Jonas to interrupt you a little bit I, i'm still you know i'm not in that community to be honest and yeah. and i don't know what type of criticism or or blame or judgment you receive so yeah I, I don't want to guess so if if you gave me just maybe something more specific to, uh, some some examples what what did you heard about you maybe even personally and what was it like I, mean, I just want to maybe get into your skin better understand what it's like to be you so i would say it's just is it's it's I would say it's people's feedback about business performance and everyone will have their opinions. So sometimes, you know, people just share, you know, what you should do or shouldn't be doing and people express how you feel about the performance. So if you did not fulfill all the promises of the roadmaps or things had to change and people, you know, don't have a full picture why it had to happen and they express their opinions. So I'm talking a very specific, simple things like, People talk about Tesla because it's a famous company, right? And if you own Tesla stock and then Elon goes out and tweets, you know, something silly, you'd be like, hey, Elon, what are you doing, right? Because you will have opinion, is he doing right or wrong? But Or if, if a company or, or even a very specifically other crypto projects or investments, you, you do, right? If you follow them and then think people are doing great, you have an opinion, express it. If you think if you think the company is doing bad, uh, you, you know, some investors do sometimes do, 
some don't go and express their opinions and then some do it in a nice way some do it in a in in an internet way and you know to be very blunt and specific is just like it's internet trolling like it's nothing more than that and that's why i don't take it seriously it's internet trolling Mm. uh and and that's why i suggest people to not take it emotionally because if you take it as internet trolling that's what it is it's fun it's engaging and it's Mm. it's it's it is internet trolling it's like you never fight it uh but when it comes to 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 real criticism uh it you know it it also for entrepreneurs it comes from all sides you know everyone has opinions on 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 things how business should be doing but only you as an entrepreneur have full set of information and and that's why it's very important to have their good advisors and partners and 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 know know which partners are of most value because nobody ever has full information people will always talk and suggest things and tell their opinions but nobody ever has full set of information and for me it's just like mathematically wrong to give strong advice if you don't have full set of information but people Mm. will happily do so Uh, so for me, you know, a good advice is when people give advice and then leave it up to you to take it or not, if they don't have mm-hmm. the same set of information. But if you see that people don't have a full set of information, you can understand their point of view and say, I understand why you're saying that. Thank you for, for saying that. And then go do your thing because you have different sets of information. And that is the common source of both the criticism entrepreneurs face by at large i think both publicly and privately from their you know whatever investors advisors and public which supports them uh online or or in real life and products is is i really think you know you only need you 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 need to have full set of information to be forceful with your advice Otherwise, you need to be humble that people, other people have more information and other reasons for their decisions. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, when I was listening to your story, you know, I definitely feel that there are certain traits that you have that maybe make you a a different beast, so to speak. And what what do I mean by that is that it seems that you are definitely resilient in the sense that you are able to realize that life is stressful and the more stress you get the more resilient you become so that's like one thing the other thing it seems that you are able to keep your uh, backbone strong in the sense that you realize that people talk and they will always talk and it's important to you know how to say uh, differentiate the chaff from the weeds you know Right and uh, and just see where where the actual value is when is someone is giving a criticism or feedback, and you know, I, I'm still tr- trying to understand you know, uh, what what made you 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 know because there are many people who are who are not growing from stress they are just worn down and they get depression they get suicidal there are many people who read every comment and they take it personally regardless of how much therapy they have or regardless of 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 that trolling you know i i'm sensitive i guess i i take criticism sensitively but maybe because i realized that behind the troll there is a human who he has something to say and yeah you know when someone is trolling it's also a manifestation of something of of some person maybe being unhappy with their lives and and maybe projecting their unhappiness so so maybe the fact that i'm more in tune with people suffering i'm i'm taking it sensitively because i know that there's a sensitive person behind the behind the mask so you know yeah i I feel that we are different in this sense and this is why i want to understand just personally as well just to learn from you where, where does these things come in your case and maybe from childhood any anything specific where how how you became you in this in this sense so i think one part of this and it, it applies not to just me it took who 
ended up working with us and who stayed together, like the the, the core of, of, of our team and, and 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 founders and everything. Everyone who stayed with us is a hard worker. And that comes to I think our culture, our like roots, like Eastern Europe. Uh because in you know the way I saw things growing up is that you just work hard and that you always work. It's just that what people do is that it's it's hard and you need to hustle. And it, it's grown into the blood and it becomes natural cycles in the brain, right? It's it's not like it becomes... Can you share more about this? Because it seems that you're, you have a specific experience in your mind. So uh, anything about your upbringing in Lithuania, anything about uh, your early childhood that maybe made you, you. Uh, maybe you can just be, be more specific. So... I think everyone is unique in their own ways from, you know, the way they're born and then it, the environment affects it. So n- without going too much in, in, into, into personal details is my, my family. Go into order. personal detail. I like that in this podcast. <laughs> uh, my family were small business owners and just parents were always hard workers. And uh, as business owners, they always had to be creative and innovative. Uh, they didn't just have like you know a job position, so I always see the hustle from the side of uh, creating and running a small family business, and uh, that formed the mindset of you know what you do is you you see opportunities, you look for opportunities, you try to make things better, you always try to make things better. That's kind of a driving force of what I was taught, and you know, dad was always constructing things and then mm. you know it was always making thing, new things making things better creating things and working hard and all the environment i saw with my friends i stayed with they're always also you know everyone who either wanted to do a lot of things or or had capability or, or were hard workers so it was always high energy people or a high energy environment but especially you know people in lithuania or 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 eastern europe in general what i tend to meet is culturally the way they were in the history and the times uh it was a period where it, it was people were working hard and 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 what i see most is people work like it's for themselves it's you know people work like it's this is the goal and it's like really important but it's not like the secondary goal, like the third goal, like I'm just going to spend some time and earn some money. It's it's people kind of, I the people I stayed with, I find them, it's hard to like, it's hard to bullshit, right? It's hard to, you just don't know how to do it. Like you do something because it's interesting or you, or, and you work hard or you, or you don't. You almost like, that's just your brain circles, circuits. And, uh, and, and, and that led to kind of, I mean, keeping that through high school, university, with always various initiatives and doing various things, never, never stopping and doing things. So that resiliency also probably came from the amount of failures. When you do things, mm. you, you constantly fail, but you fail quick and fast and you learn. So I, I guess very early I stopped taking things in, you know, because if you, if you, if, if you, if you, if you do a lot of things, you don't finish a lot of things, you know, you, you get a lot of feedback and then you naturally try to start to treat that as a feedback to move forward rather than criticism to you or like rather than, you know, something negative, like you just turn it into a positive growing experience. And then, you know, any failures you had, you, you really look at them as, as, as learning experiences and always, yeah. you know, almost make fun of that internally. And, and move on rather than take it in and stressfully and beat yourself up to it. And, 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 you know, I guess it goes down to like, you know, people should never say internally to them, oh, I'm not capable, I'm bad, I'm this and that. Like, that, that's not helpful at all. If you fail, you, you, you know, you like shit. <laughs> and then you go do it again. That's it. So you know? speaking, speaking of failures, uh, uh, maybe more earlier ones. So for example... When I think about my own upbringing, the most probably uh, life-changing thing, uh, the the most positive and the most negative was bullying. So I ex- right. experienced bullying at school. 
probably because on the one hand, uh, my parents were teachers, so that's already a stressor. Right. Uh, one of the teachers, my mother, she was working at the same school where I was studying, so that's another stressor. And then the third one, I was good. And you know, mm -hmm. and when you're good, you're always at a crosshair, so to yes, speak. Yeah, you have a target. So, yeah, you're a target essentially because you now are in a difficult spot because if you are uh, too smart, then my, people might think that okay, so maybe that's because your mother is a teacher. Right. If you are not smart enough, so then you're stupid. So that's another reason to bully you. So, yeah. and then you find yourself in this situ situation, you know. But the good thing from this was that. I became quite hypersensitive. I learned how to judge people very quickly. Right. And, you know, I just need to look at a face uh, for, at someone and I see their intentions, basically. Right. And I, I noticed that uh, with people who are also had this and it's like it can become a superpower. And maybe this is why I'm, I'm working as a psychologist. Now, when I think about you, Jonas, that's my speculation, but you're from Panevejis, right? Yes, originally, yeah. So, so that's like I'm from Malitos. So these are cities that uh, like were were born like what in '92 or something like that. Ninety for me, but yeah. Ninety for you, ninety-two for me. So that's like you before uh, collapsing Soviet Union, me after collapsing Soviet Union. So a lot of gopniks in those cities, a lot of gangs, you know, a lot of violence, yeah. and that's a environment that definitely gives you resilience. So at least for me, but. For you, maybe, because you seem you have an, a, some kind of edge to you when you're talking, when you're describing, when you're talking about resilience. It seems that there is an edge and it seems that this edge comes from somewhere. So anything about this? What so I'm, I'm not a psychologist. So you tell me where, you know, what kind of like, I don't know what affected something, but mm -hmm. I guess you can make, you know, guesses that. Yeah, but, I mean, we've seen things growing up, I guess, compared yeah. to. But at the same time, who do you compare it with? You know, people grew up in much harder neighborhoods and like, who am I to talk about harsh neighborhoods? But uh, but compared to what? Yeah, I mean, it was somewhat somewhat rough upbringing in that it wasn't too safe to walk down the streets. You mm. know, there was things like robberies and and uh, and, and, and and assaults and, and, and bullying around the city. And, uh, you know, people found, teenagers found their ways to, 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 to survive, right? So, like, people get into groups of friends, people, people know each other, people start forming uh, sides and spheres of influence and, uh, and, and, and survive that way. So, I've seen a lot of that in a kind of teenage good years where it was sort of, you know, Panevijis was called the Little Chicago. Uh, of Lithuania, uh, but it's I, at the same time it was nothing too too bad. I guess it really depends who you compare it with, because yeah, people people grew up in a rougher uh, neighborhoods, but for us it was just like a general general environment where you need to stand up on your feet, be street smart. You need to know how to talk. Uh, you need to think fast and logical, and that street smartness is again another trait. You know, mm. kind of the, the people in Eastern Europe have, especially from that era in my age, because mm. you grew up in a, on a street in a way and you needed to be street smart. And that's our superpower. And that not taking it in, as you said, comes from also that friendly bullying, which was like our thing, you know. So in other environments, and I've, like I'll just tell an example. Like mm. my, my, my sister went to Italy and the uh, Italians apparently don't make fun of themselves or or at least that you know that circle didn't and and my sister being like ourselves like Lithuanians do is you know started telling some jokes or like you know telling some things about their friends which are funny and they just didn't take it right so for us it's so natural to just like always keep punching each other you know and that mm. is just the way we 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 handle ourselves and that was all life you know that was from internet to real life on the street was you need to stand up to yourself you need to stand up to bullying you need to not take it in uh if you do take it in you'll get dumb 10 times as much on so that's when you learn to not because like the minute you cave in you get 100 times more 
Mm -hmm. Did you experience any type of bullying, whatever you understand it, like in your understanding? In my understanding, not so much. I guess everyone mm -hmm. experienced some form of it at, in a school, but I guess in my experience, I would call it figuring out your place. Uh, mm. Every 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 teenager needs to. So my experience was good because, as you said, I was I was a smart kid. I you know I did good at mm. school. Uh, teachers liked me, etc., because I did good. So there's you know there was no reason not to like me. But at the same time, as you said, you need to keep your cool. Yes. And because you can't be just too good at it's it's cool, right? So you, you need to balance the crowds. So I mm. think I I think I did that. Uh, I guess it's mm. not up to me to my friends to say. Uh, I, you know, I kept being good at school, but managed, managed the crowds. So I never experienced too much bullying, but was never involved in too much bullying of others either. Or so I think, mm. so mm. I tried to be conscious about it. You know, I, all, I, I, I never liked when people are bullied or, or saw people being bullied. Other people are maybe naturally more aggressive, etc. I never liked that. I don't agree with that at all. I always want to just leave people alone. Don't care what other people do, think or say. So, but as you said, you just, you know, as a teenager, you try to, try to, you know, try to find your place, keep being there. Hmm. And I can't imagine that uh, you as a kid from Panevergis, not saying that Panevergis doesn't have intelligent people, but you going to University of Edinburgh, you know, studying well, you know, I think you were, I guess, in your parents' eyes, a success story. What do you think? So maybe in I don't know what is a success story in my parents' heads. Like so, again, it was always if you if you bring a nine instead of a ten at school, it's like, oh, I got a nine. Okay, well, why why is it not a ten? Why? Yeah. <laughs> what, what what happened? <laughs> so I don't know what that is, but I guess so. I mean, I I do tend to think. Uh, I do like to inspire people when I can, especially if there's opportunities for younger students in school. So I tried to give back my share when I was fresher after leaving school or when I was still in Lithuania. So I tried to give back a little bit uh, at least. Uh, is it a success story? It really depends. Like, you know, we haven't, in, in my head, we haven't, we're not done yet, right? So it's, it's nothing is just, in my head, it's not yet, but, I guess it depends, right? So we 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 did study good. Uh, I had a good career. I tried several uh, entrepreneurship opportunities, and uh, with the, with Syntropy, we created a lot of great technologies. I managed a large team. I learned a lot about people, and 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 and, and that's the most I learned is not as a CTO is not technologies like like you know technologies is technologies. If you know how to code, you learn a new language. You code. But it, it's 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 how to deal with people, and and in the business it's how to deal with people. So, I think I learned a lot, and I have a lot of experience to share by now. But it always depends to who you know, because at the same time you feel like you're still a non an accomplished entrepreneur before before the results really speak out of themselves. So, again, it it really depends on the reference point, right? Okay. So so for you, Jonas, when we're speaking about success. What is like success? What is like end game for you? So like, if you won the game, how would it look like for you? Yeah. So I had then a couple of years ago when there was um, uh, sort of the bull run and the great economic situation and the business was expanding as well. Everything was doing great. I had sort of a higher vision where I thought, okay, I'm going to do internet technologies first. And then then probably I'm going to do some sort of robots to Mars or whatever, like another stint, which would be, you know, so something Elon Musk style. Uh, now I got a little more humble and, and put that mm -hmm. to backlog. And, and the goal is to really build out a, a scaled out company, which creates technologies. So, you know, let's, let's just put a goal on it, you know, a billion dollar company, which, which creates technologies. So that would be like a higher level, not too specific goal, which can manifest in many different ways. And we're we're on the right path, but the path's far and and, and wide. Uh, 
Hmm. So bats now, I I I, I kind of narrow down the focus on on bats. So that would be success, but not for me personally. I don't care about the billion dollars or 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 or, or that. For me, it would be finishing something you started, like growing that thing to become a self-sufficient organism. So when that company mm. becomes a self-sufficient organism, you know, creating different products and technologies, it's no longer that one thing you created, that one product, that one idea. It's it's an initiative. It's 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 a company. It's an organization. And to to make it self-sufficient is is almost like you know I I don't have kids yet but it's almost like bring bring another child in a way right and, i thought and, the same when you were yeah. talking yeah yeah so that's kind of the goal is you don't want to you, you don't want to leave your kid when he's four years old kind of in a way right so you're still looking for some sort of fruition right so and that's why i still have this um unfinished business is that it's it's not mm-hmm. fulfilled to fruition yet like you, you can't put a number on it uh, you know, what market cap or a number of people working, like, it's not mm. about that. It's about, is it, is, is it fulfilled what you, what you started? So, you know, just to, to keep integrity as much as I can, I'll always try to finish. And then until like yeah. the last resort. And if, if mm. worst comes to worst, then you, then you move on. Uh, yeah, but we're not, we're not easy quitters. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, I mean, what you're describing makes sense also about uh, bringing a child into this world, child metaphorically speaking, because there are, you know, existential psychologists who say that, you know, uh, bringing up a company, you know, uh, getting it into this world and seeing it grow, it's like, you know, seeing a child grow. And it's like one of the ways how we manage death anxiety, basically. Because okay. for some people, kids are not an option. It just they they don't see themselves in this in this venue, in this avenue. But then they find alternatives. So some people, you know, educate. Others do counseling. Others do entrepreneurship. Yeah. So I think that's definitely one of the ways. How can we find meaning? But still, you know, when I think from the other side, to me. But tell me what you think. I, I would mm-hmm. lo- I would love to hear your your opinion. To me. I see like, you know, getting a, a any job or creating any company, for me, it's like just playing a very complicated computer game. Yeah. And com- computer games, you know, at the end of the day, our goal is to have fun, you know. And, uh, but when you, you look, when you look from this perspective, from this angle, it can also look silly because why do you need to, invest so much time in reaching level 90, uh, 99, you know, so to speak. Yeah. So it can, it can put you in a situation where you think, okay, so what's the meaning of that? Because it's, yeah, I'm just playing Witcher free very at a very higher level, basically. So, and, and, and when I'm thinking about my own practice, when I'm thinking, do I need to scale it or not? Uh, I'm thinking, okay, so yeah. So do I want to play this game or not? So, any ideas about this metaphor work being just basically games and maybe is it important? Is it not important? What what do you think? So life being a game is 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 is, is sort of you know a, a, a deeper topic. But the second part you touched is like the how seriously you should take it is is a very good question and you should always mm-hmm. yeah I agree with you. you should come back to the uh, like the way of thinking through, through happiness, right? If you, if you, I think entrepreneurship is a very hard route and I think it's a career, not a stint. So that's, that's very important to understand for maybe again, people thinking about that or like switching from developers to being entrepreneur. Mm. It's, it's a career path. You're, you'll probably fail two free businesses, three, three years each. And then maybe year seven, maybe year 11, uh, when it, when did you succeed? You succeed greatly, but it doesn't mean it will happen and it might happen on year 11. Similarly to if you're the best banker or whatever, if you're doing good and like improving every year, you know, 
going up the career ladder on year 11, like you'd be pretty senior, right? So it's same with entrepreneurship. If you're doing good on year 11, you'd probably be a pretty good entrepreneur. So it's it's a career path. It, it, it doesn't mean that when you create an idea or a stint, it's like this is, I, I think you should look at it as a career path, but then give a full attention to the business you're doing. And then if you if you start seeing that this is exciting and you like that, you're that type of person, you like the dynamics of it, or you find your style of entrepreneurship, great. And then, you know, you can choose this career path and basically then read about how is it going to look like. But if you really think like this is the high dynamics is is too much or or some of those things which like definitely come in entrepreneurship or at least in some areas or niches or businesses and you're just not into that i would suggest really to just trying or going against the just you know if if the motivating factor is 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 money or or some quick gains or something it might be disappointing because it's so hard and per hour, you you work, you earn less per hour. The amount of hours you you put in, probably first years of entrepreneurship, is 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 exhausting. And so, so that's the thing, Johannes. Uh, sorry to interrupt you a little bit. That's that's the reason why I'm asking this question about the game. So it's like, if you can uh, play a game that is enjoyable, you know, why do you need to play a game that creates more suffering than enjoyment? So yeah. from a hedonism perspective, like hedonic happiness perspective, it doesn't really make sense to go an entrepreneurship route because you will just fail a lot. Yes, you will learn a lot. And I think that's the most important part. But even if you win, whatever that means, okay, you create a billion uh, valuation company. Okay, so whatever. It's just, it's just number. Okay, yeah, so absolutely. you have a lot of stuff. You have a lot of stuff. You have a lot of influence. Many people recognize you in the street. So, okay. Again, so, you know, I'm just trying to see the. the I'm just trying to see the the purpose of it because I'm and I'm asking it personally, but mm -hmm. also for discussion purposes. So, what's the point if it's just a game at the end of the day? There is none, and that's my opinion. That there is no. Mm, and, and okay. That's, okay. And that's, that that's why I think if you enjoy that path, and again, it's definitely not about that number or whatever. Uh, you'll 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 succeed. You'll, what happens when entrepreneurs sell their companies? You know, they take a, a week and then start a new one because that's all you know. That's all you know what to do is like create initiatives. And there's nothing else you know how to do. And then as 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 long as you don't want to stop expressing yourself like completely, then you just keep doing the same thing in maybe a different environment. And that is okay. And that's why I'm saying if you feel like you're that kind of person or you're like super, let's say, energetic, right? You can, and and you, there's, there's cert, certain type of people where you, you see they'll end up either a billionaire or in jail, right? Because, you know, they're just that type of people. Or so both. Or, or both, so might as well be, you know, not try to be entrepreneur. Uh, and then there's other people who, let's say, don't have a stereotypical, uh, like you know, traits uh, for entrepreneur. But then, if they still want the drive or the values of that, then you can see, okay, now it's you know, in this new age, you can be any type of entrepreneur. You can do TikTok. You can do single people, companies, you can do whatever. Yeah. So so there's different types then of, of things, but certain things repeat, like, you know, the stress repeats very often, etc. But then you can say, okay, I'm going to try to do entrepreneurship with no stress. That's my thought. I'm going to write a blog about it, entrepreneurship with zero stress, right? And maybe you find you invent a new way of entrepreneurship. Great, that's your thing. Mm. Uh, but, but it's not easy. Like, it's just to kind of give a very simple heads up. It's not easy. It's a lot of hours and... It's it's love uncertainty and so on. So when I first yeah. started, I was like, everyone should be entrepreneur. Later on, now I'm like, not necessarily. People like there's there's certain paths and and it doesn't it, it doesn't come with candy. So I think people should really see what they're best at and what's their best, you know, faith in nature and really double down on it. 
or if you want to you know kind of win the capitalism game or whatever and say okay i'm not going to do salary i'm going to either do a business or or content or whatever but you know change the form then i think today there's a lot of different forms you can do that to fit your personality so if you are entrepreneurial type go do that all great if you're not there's content there's other types of things to do uh where everyone can now be basically you know their own their own entrepreneur and yeah. that's really cool these days you know uh, when you mentioned uh, this the phrase winning the capitalist game i think that was the phrase there is an opinion, and I guess, partially speaking, I hold this opinion as well, that winning the capitalist game is is not playing the capitalist game. Depends what, what you find winning, right? So one, I think, I think one way to look at it, not with, like not playing it is winning, because if you just disassociate mm. from, if you kind of spiritually disassociate from, uh, from material things then yeah. it doesn't apply to you anymore. So that's kind of that way of mm. framework. If but but still life happens, right? So let's say still you mm -hmm. have your family, your house, whatever, you still want a better life, right? So if yeah. if you're still thinking about sort of this world's framework, the physical world's framework, then then you then you work in this physics and maths like laws. And Yes. And, and, the, and the maths laws of, you know, the capitalism in this example are, you know, are such and such. So and yeah. entrepreneurship is a very extremely high reward, but extremely low, uh, low probability mm. career. Uh, but it's almost the only one which, which has a high reward. And then it's similar to investing. So high risk investing mm -hmm. has a high reward, but it's high risk. And that's why people lose money, but and that's why people yes. protect, protect, you know, governments protect people from high risk speculations. But at the same time, they protect them from high rewards. Hmm. So the the way of just saving money or just salary is a very steady way, and then a good career is a very steady way combined with investing to to life. Entrepreneurship hmm. is almost the only way to high rewards. But it's a very low probability way. So you know, you just need to realize the maths. But if if let's say your life goal is you mathematically want to do more, then it's just not gonna happen on a salary, right? So then you need to start doing either your own initiative or content or business or entrepreneurship or investment or or high risk investment or or trading or whatever. Uh, so you know that's that's very often what drives people from from mm -hmm. salary based environments into entrepreneurship but people also burn because it's a low, very low probability environment it's very very hard mm -hmm. so i'm just giving sort of enough alternatives and ideas where i i really do think that there's a combination of now in terms of ai content social media uh skills hobbies uh, to, 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 to build up a combination of, of, of things where you can leverage yourself. And in two, three years, you can leverage yourself. You can add additional income sources. You can start investing. You can, you can mm -hmm. do different strategies uh, and, and, and have this middle ground uh, rather than, you know, pure on entrepreneurship. And then because you have very often you have two, three, four year cycles of seeing anything back so the, the the right motivating factor to do it should be learning doing something you think is cool doing uh without much expectation to be honest mm. Mm. but i don't want to sound negative i mean the, the, like there's a lot of success stories and 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 at the same time we i think we are a success story because we have been uh, operating for you know five years we we have been employing people and uh, creating technologies. So it is, you know, it's been going great. And I'm very happy what we created this initiative, you know, out of nothing, mm -hmm. you now have an initiative and and, and, and value being produced. Uh, so it's really cool and rewarding. It's rewarding from people's perspective. It's rewarding in many, many ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, it doesn't sound negative to me, you know, but I definitely agree to you that at least personally, and spiritually, I'm very dissociated with that. Maybe yeah. because I realized that 
most of the things that are produced by the market we just don't need yeah it's just surplus surplus and uh, basically this is why we get into the problem of inflation you know so right and uh, when i think about myself uh, and you're saying about mathematics you know i think i agree with you that if you're talking about mathematics but specifically calculus yes winning is more you know but right. In mathematics, there is also geometry, and in geometry, there is depth, there is expansion. Yep. So the question is, what type of mathematical framework you're following? And I guess I'm, metaphorically speaking, a geometrician in the sense that I like depth. Mm -hmm. And sometimes depth is not more, you know, sometimes depth is less. And uh, in my life, you know, I have a purpose. So t tell me what you think about this. But uh, my idea is that... Uh, Yes, capital is game is not going anywhere probably. Now the question is how can we make this capitalist game as healthy as possible for human beings, you know. Yeah. And unfortunately in many companies yeah, people are playing the capitalist game but it doesn't seem that they enjoy it as much as they would enjoy let's say playing Counter-Strike or Witcher or whatever. I mean, it seems that there's too much suffering, you know. And I realize that this comes from you know, lack of blend, lack of balance or whatever term you use. And it also comes from the fact that people are working for people who are thinking from a calculus perspective, they just need more. And then you get into conflicting relationships because maybe the people you hire, they don't need more. They just need to maintain their family, you know. And this is why, yeah. you know, I often, often tell my clients who find themselves in these struggles, you know, when they have to work for such a company that, you know, uses, abuses or whatever. I, I just rem I remind them that back in the day when we are like tribes people, it, we, we never like entered new territories unless we actually needed it, unless we, our resources uh, were now removed, we would need more fish, more meat, more berries, different territory with more animals or, or something like that, or maybe run away from another tribe. So this is the reason when we need to be entrepreneurs, so to speak, you know, right. but now it seems we in a, we are in a world where like entering new territories is like the thing, you know, but okay, but it's not, you know, as a tribes people, there, there needs to be time for, you know, rest, there needs to be time for taking care for your children, there needs to be time for dance, for for you know fun around the fire or whatever and it seems that in this world there's little of that and yeah it's strange to think where where we at right now in the world and yeah. it doesn't sound very no i think very, very positive I you know, perspective i think i think okay the way i see world now happening is everyone's in their low or their own eco chambers and uh mm. what so i'll give you an example what kind of supported this realization is i get my news from youtube now a lot of people do people choose their medium and it used to be you have sources of media and then you get various sorts of news from them because there's trusted source about everything now if you're into tesla you very quickly youtube gives you five guys who talks about tesla and you choose one you like for probably personal traits or how he speaks and naturally that becomes your guy for tesla news Another guy mm -hmm. becomes, you know, your guy for synths. Another guy, you know, or girl becomes, you know, a person for travel or whatever. And in the YouTube, then in this example, YouTube or Twitter, it can be anything, becomes your gateway to information. And I realized, yes. imagine how much content there is in the world now, like the, the iceberg behind YouTube, right? The amount of content, like, and the gateway to it is nine squares. You mm -hmm. open YouTube and you see nine squares and it suggests you what to watch. And if you don't like what you're seeing, it's almost impossible to get anything else. You're like, give me something else or more. And if you get to the point where you need to search what you want to watch, you're like... It's impossible it's because like, the search is oh, not you're working. searching what you want to watch, like just give me to watch, right? So the YouTube becomes a gateway for you of nine squares to all of the masses amount of content there is in the world. You could be watching this or that, but you're watching what YouTube gives you for those in those nine squares. And and that becomes everyone becomes living in extremely small eco chambers compared to the world. And mm -hmm. 
you know, the reason we are talking is because we're in this entrepreneurial environment. We're in technologies, etc. The reason people will be listening to us is because they probably have something yes. in common. And we are in this eco chamber, but like when you get out and meet like artist communities or you go out and yes. you know spend time in like music communities, other other types of art, whatever, uh, you realize sometimes that oh oh damn, the world's bigger, right? I just I'm I'm just not in it. So I and this technology community is actually small and entrepreneur community is actually really small. It just really sticks together. You almost stop talking to other types of people or especially in crypto, it silos you so much because you start living differently. you like, your lifestyle is different. Your relationships are different. Mm. Your finances are different. Your world to like view world, worldview is, is different. And you start to just hang with these communities and then, you know, we even have a joke. It's like, you know, no coiners. It's like, who do you talk about of no coiners? It's like, if if, <laughs> if, you, if, if a person is not in crypto, like, what do you talk about? Like, of course, it's mm -hmm. a joke, but this is this is a standing joke. So we we tend to kind of only see that, I think, and that this this greed or this like push for innovation, this this whole running, I think it's self-induced by people like us who mm -hmm. are born for that like or inclined for that like you need mm -hmm. people who always check the boundaries who invent things etc mm -hmm. i think there's even uh biologically there is a circuit in the brain certain amounts of people basically there's always certain amount of people who will die for a greater goal yes, who yeah. will kill themselves or or sacrifice themselves for a greater goal like biologically there's a certain percent of people who would be willing to do that and others won't so the world, in a way, is done so that there's always all types of people to do their part, do their role. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of the world which is slow and and relaxed and and uh, and 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 not participating in this self-induced world of innovation and technology, etc. Uh, we're just not in it. So, you know, I don't know. I but think you know, I think uh, we're in a bubble. You know, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying, and I think uh, what what I'm taking from you is that uh, yes, there are bubbles. Yes, we influence each other. Uh, yes, there is need for people who are those you know explorer explorers who yeah. go to uncharted territories and and get get basically new sources of for for food. You know, evolutionary speaking. But you know, I guess where I was getting at is that. It, it seems that there is this, this dichotomy because either you are living like a relaxing life, but then you are like a parasite that uses, or you are that entrepreneur, that explorer who is creating, right. you know, new realities in a way. And in psychology, you know, it's a, we, we call this um, black and white thinking, basically, that you, you are either or, you know. And when I think yeah. about myself, you know, I definitely put myself in that bubble that you described where in a way, you know, I'm I'm kind of dying for a bigger cause because I want to make sure that that the people who are creating those innovations they are they are self conscious, they are self aware, they are mindful, they understand themselves, they are emotionally literate, they understand their needs, they are empathetic, all that jazz, you know. Yeah. And because this helps them create more sustainable products that are healthy for us, that are needed for us, and but at the same time, you know. I don't feel a rush, you know. I mean, yes, I have a limited number of years that I live. And my, what gives me meaning, if I do something every day that, like, moves me millimeter yep. uh, towards that vision, you know. But if I die w without not achieving that winning or whatever it is, it doesn't matter because every day is a win, you know, because yep. you learn something. So, so I'm still trying to figure out is maybe that's that's the core of entrepreneurship is like enjoying every day having fun you know and if you lose whatever there's another project that you can work on and just create value but still you know despite that it seems that there is a lot of surplus and most of the products are just <laughs> I, I, I don't want to insult people but just useless you know it's yep. just 
you know, project for the sake of project, you know, yeah. just to, you know, to get money in a way. So. Yeah. But again, maybe that's, it's part of innovation, right? So you need that variety of things tested to really see what works. Uh, you're mm. right. In, in, you're right in a way that like, it's actually statistically, I think only what 7% of companies live more than some X amount of years. Like I don't want to lie on, on, on numbers, mm-hmm. but basically very few companies survive on a long time frame. I'm thinking yes. like 20, 30 years, right? You, you know, you yeah. have the Coca-Cola's of the world, uh, which, you know, people do like sugar. Uh, that didn't change for a while. Uh, so it is the most... But actually, the- sorry, it's changing yeah. because people now are uh, drinking Diet Coke and it's becoming a thing. It's still sweet. Yeah, you know. Well, it is, yeah, sure. It's but still, less sweeter. It still tricks you into thinking it's a berry, right, in a forest. Yeah, sure. <laughs> So, so, yeah, I think that most of the products are not necessary in sort of kind of Maslow pyramid scale, right? So if exactly, the, yeah. if the if the solar flare hits, all you need is basically you know medicine, some gold, and and guns, uh, <laughs> and a ledger maybe if int- if internet comes back at some point later. <laughs> but you know all of your DJ equipment goes through a window, right? So, but at the same time, it's not to say it's not needed. It brings every every new product, every 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 new failed product brought people together to try and do things. Some of those people were never entrepreneurs. They were, you know, whatever, cleaners, servers, uh, you know, anyone. And then maybe it's the first time they're doing a product now. They're doing uh, not necessarily blockchain technologies. They're doing a new cereal. You know, which is you know gluten free bread or, or 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 whatever you know. So a lot of these failures bring a lot of good to the world, and they maybe manifest in the third business and the fourth business. Like you know, I had to close the business down, but this business would be nothing without my experience before. Um, mm-hmm. So in a way, I I kind of I take the whole world as a random system of agents interacting with each other. It's 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 like water with you know some ink dropped in it. That's it. Mm-hmm. And uh, now the question is, who dropped that ink, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty much. That's the imbalance <laughs> of matter and, and antimatter, right? That the source yeah. of the, the source of existence. Nobody know how that happened, but, but yeah, I think I think everything you, everything yeah. is okay. Like I tend to normally say. There's always about any situation. There's always like immediate reason this is good or bad, mm-hmm. but I I never think anything is good or bad. I think everything yes. is just the way it it is, and there's reasons for it getting to that point, and there's there's reasons how things yeah. gonna get in the future, but nothing is good or bad of the way it's supposed to be because how things are supposed to be, right? So, I I just tend to yeah. look at it as in, even in the business, people say oh like. You know, this project is, is crap or like this thing is nonsense. It's like, you don't know. The market will tell until, you know, mm. maybe what happens a year from this is going to be the greatest thing ever. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I totally agree, I guess, with the gist of what you're saying is that at the end of the day, you want to make sure that you are creative. And yeah. when you said that anyone can be an, an entrepreneur, or should be an entrepreneur, although you were back down from this position. I guess I agree to it in the sense that everyone can and should be an entrepreneur of, in the sense of a create a person who creates things, who develops things. And yes, yeah. you can create a company, but you can create a family, you can create a child, you can create a procedure that will be followed in a company by our people. And I think creativity is at the core And, you know, I think as long as we realize that moments are very precious and life is precious and we still haven't figured out death, you know, so as long as it's the the reality, we need to enjoy the moment. And, you know, yeah, I guess for me, definitely now what I learned is that creating a company is much more than playing a game because you are in a way creating a game and playing it at the same time. 
and it for me it makes much more sense and yeah it gives me much more hope and it's it, everyone and has it gives a, different, me a different perspective everyone has a different way to kind of fulfill their life and purpose right and yeah and i sent i kind of feel that one of my one of the purposes i want to do in life is create opportunities and like it, mm -hmm. it does matter for me to create opportunities for others i just it's just something mm -hmm. i enjoy when it happens and creating a company can be really not necessarily self-aimed goal it can be to provide opportunities to 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 create yes. opportunities to create initiatives to have more things in the world happening that on its own mm -hmm. is a noble goal in my head uh and mm -hmm. then let's let other people figure out how to put things into places because it always like life always puts things into places but mm -hmm. You know, you can be the one kickstarting the initiative, or 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 doing what you do best, and then and then letting things get on together. Sometimes you see all you need is just ignite that powers somewhere, and mm. then and then things start happening, and then a couple of years later you see things happening out of nothing, right? So when when you have a child, as you said, your example, it's very obvious. You, you like it's not like you forget. But with technologies and stuff, you you some you, you just work, but then you turn back and say, okay, that platform or that algorithm or that product was not existent before. It was just not there. And now it's there. And the way it came to be is just out of nothing. You just make up a name. Like how how do we call it? Oh, let's call it like this and that. You know, very often it looks like products are created, the big decisions are taken with very big considerations and people know what they're doing and everyone's an expert in their fields. Yeah. Normally everything happened randomly pretty much everywhere. It's, it's, it's the process, you know, and those, you know, names appear yeah. naturally. Yeah. And then, and then you just turn back and see a lot of things were created. And that process yes. is noble on itself because it always reveals new things. And mm -hmm. if other people are able to pick up on them, that's good enough for me. Yeah. Yeah, I think nobility is a good term here, and I, I see that our time is running out, but I, I guess the last thought from my side is that, you know, uh, I, I'm not a religious person, but I definitely can call myself a spiritual person, and sure. I like the idea, uh, it's it's like very niche, niche bubble, but there are people who like the idea that God is a developer, you know, <laughs> and it's very and tightly yeah. related to the Sorry? An engineer. Yeah, and it's very totally related to the simulation hypothesis that if, let's say, we are able to create simulations with self-conscious beings in them, so in a way, it's it makes sense to think that we are in a, simulations, in a simulation right now. And I think it brings me a lot of responsibility uh, when you said about creating opportunities. So for me, it's about creating opportunity for people to become self-aware. Right. And if that makes, and if it means that we will create systems where uh, AI will become self-aware, I think it's important to create the opportunity for AI and, you know, reduct your ad absurdum because who knows, maybe that AI will create another AI. So yep. having this in mind, I think it helps me, gives me, a, a, how to say, curiosity in life because although I don't think that we are watched and someone is participating actively, yep. I think it's, it feels comforting that someone created us and that we had a vision and maybe put that ink and, you know, the process started because we are in a way doing this. So, yeah, I, I tend so, to think I tend to think that we're just carbon based AI, you know, like everything like okay. the, the life we know is, is carbon molecule based and it's carbon yes. because it, it gives like the designer knows that. The, it, yes. it gives most opportunities to combine together and that's why it can create most complex structures yeah. which life came out from and we are now creating silicon based life forms which True. start to be somewhat smart you know I've seen FSD 12 driving around LA now without interruption for an hour self driving fully and it's like okay we're on to something right so we're creating silicon based yeah. life forms little by little uh, yeah. but yeah I tend to yeah. not I tend to not, you know, think too much of ourselves too, because, you know, 
a, if if you think about yourself as a, as a, as an AI agent, everything makes sense because you just need to keep learning. Like if you think yeah, about, exactly. If, exactly. If you think about the world as as a, as, as a self learning neural net, then all you need to do yeah. is keep learning and just take things exactly. day by day as they come. Yeah, yeah. I guess and we gr be grateful for having a proper operating system to have a drive to learn because not all yeah. people have it, unfortunately. So, okay, yeah. Jonas, so if, if we go, sorry, just to interrupt, I see that our time is running out and usually I, uh, at, the, at the last part of the, uh, at the session, I tend to maybe allow the, the guests to reflect what they took. So from the conversation, so speaking of our conversation, any anything that maybe stuck to you what you described, what we described, and that you are taking from from this this thing. Yeah, I think what was was you know when we talked before, it seemed like there's a lot of challenges and hardships to talk about. But then, kind of realized when talking that everything is actually great and beautiful. You know, these mm. challenges, as I said, is something you enjoy. Otherwise, you wouldn't do those things. So, mm -hmm. normally, entrepreneurs who stick to entrepreneurship they wouldn't do anything else. Like they complain and life's hard and it definitely is hard for them because we do have more stress. It's natural for anyone who has more responsibility. Even if you're in a company in a big responsibility roles, it, it goes yeah. up. Entrepreneurship, of course, more so. But yeah. it, you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do anything else, right? So I, th I think, you know, it's learning to take those challenges and be happy about them in a way, like take, take them the right way. Uh, and as you said, if you, if you enjoy them, then that's the path for you. Mm. Then times get tough and you secretly still enjoy that. <laughs> yes. Then, then it's good. Then if you, if you get to a point when you really stop enjoying it, like for real, then it's time to get to friends or, or support whatever and, and see if they can keep okay. you on your path. Or maybe it just isn't your path and that is totally okay. It's okay yeah. to do less things. It's it's okay to to chill yeah. and, 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 and do and be whatever you are. At least for the time being. At right. least for the time being. Yeah. Okay, Anna. So that, that was wonderful. Uh, I love that you challenged me. That's the, the most enjoying part for me because then I learned the most. So uh, that was very great to have you here. And maybe we'll... Sure. Yeah, Before thanks for having me. It was it was it was good to chat about things you never talk about, you know, not about well, technology. I take this things. as a compliment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay.